Hello and welcome everyone to a brand new challenge here on Super Carlin Gaming. Today we are going to find out if I can burn down Kanto with just a Vulpix. What is this challenge? How did we get here? Why take this on at all, you might be asking? Well, I've been watching a lot of other Pokemon channels lately and have noticed a trend of, can I beat Pokemon with just a fill in the blank? Specifically, I've been inspired by the likes of Madra Bread, Jay Wits, and Mystic Umbreon, all of which have done similar challenges I have just really enjoyed watching and wanted to try it myself, and I chose to try and beat Leaf Green with just a Vulpix. But why Vulpix, you might be wondering? Well, since we're doing Kanto, I wanted it to be native to that region, and in Kanto, I've always found Fire to be one of the absolute worst types to have on your team. Fire makes you weak to the first two gym leaders, leaders and the first two members of the Elite Four, not to mention Lance, whose dragons resist you and whose other Pokemon are all strong against you. You have to take on Giovanni and his ground types three times, and you can still set it up so your rival gets a Squirtle, meaning you'll be facing down his Blastoise over and over. And on top of that, I've just been digging fire types lately. I've been doing a mono fire type run through Ultra Sun and loving it, and I thought this would just be another fun way to flex my fire muscles, but that left me wondering which is the worst fire Pokemon in all of Kanto and the answer is Vulpix. Vulpix has the worst base stat total of any fire type in Kanto and a rather mediocre move pool. The only thing it really has going for it is its base 65 special defense and the ability to learn flamethrower at level 29. Also just as sort of a nice bonus since you need a firestone to evolve it, I won't have to cancel out it evolving every single time it levels, which is really just a nice convenience. So before we begin, let's just go over all the other rules of this challenge. First, I can only use a Vulpix in battle Battle, but can catch other Pokemon to use HMs to advance through the game. I cannot use any items in battle, but can use them outside of battle. Hold items for Vulpix are still okay. And finally, I can't use any cheats or glitches other than to set the game up so that I can start with a Vulpix. And that's pretty much it. Those are the rules. Let me know if you think I will be successful in the comment section down below. I start the game off, dub myself J, and revive my old and best rival, Peaches. I quickly abandon my home and seek adventure in the great wide somewhere before immediately being stopped and asked to choose my first Pokemon. As I said earlier, I was able to use the Universal Pokemon Randomizer to make Vulpix a choosable option at the beginning, and I chose to have it replace the Charmander option so that my rival would still choose Squirtle, just for a little added challenge. Choosing my Vulpix was not as easy as you might think, though. Since I can only use one Pokemon throughout the journey and won't be able to heal in battle, I wanted to make sure I gave myself as many advantages as possible with in the game itself. That meant getting the right nature, and for Vulpix, I decided to go with Modest, which boosts special attack and lowers physical attack. See, in Gen 3, whether or not you use physical attack or special attack is 100% down to type rather than the moves themselves. Fire, water, electric, grass, ice, psychic, dragon, and dark are special. Normal, fighting, poison, ground, flying, bug, rock, ghost, and steel are physical. Fortunately, our fire type Vulpix base stats favor special attack over physical, and since my main strategy is going to be to get flamethrower and burn as many things as possible, I feel confident in mostly abandoning physical attack, which hopefully pays off. All I had to do to get my modest Vulpix was to restart the game a few times until I got the desired nature, but I totally forgot to give her a name, so I'm going to leave that up to you guys. Leave your best name suggestions in the comment section down below. But now the challenge really begins. Our first battle is with Peaches. We burn his dumb turtle, he quickly perishes, and we earn some solid XP. From there, I head to Viridian Forest and conquer it with absurd ease. These bug catchers had no idea the terror that waited from them from my mighty ember. Before facing Brock, however, who I am certain will be a much bigger problem, I remember I can embarrass Peaches once more. I head back to Viridian City and trigger the optional fight. I was initially concerned his Pidgey might sand attack me, but needn't have worried. Vulpix destroys him in one blow and is so mighty that despite having a water attack, Squirtle is afraid to use them and he perishes once more. Our next stop is the Pewter City Gym and our first real test, Brock. While I don't anticipate being able to beat him at my current level, I decided to head in any way to test my strength against his lone underling who proves to be no challenge at all and offers some nice XP. After a quick heal, I decide to see how much training will be necessary to defeat Brock by challenging the man himself. His Geodude puts up literally no fight at all and just defense curls for 
the whole fight, which is pointless because I'm burning him with special attack moves. This does give me hope though. While Brock's Pokemon resist fire moves and have high physical defense, they don't have high special defense, so I'm actually still able to do pretty reliable damage. Additionally, even though I'm weak to rock, Vulpix is fast and Ember can burn foes, which is really helpful. If you're unaware, burn does more than just add a little bit of extra damage at the end of every turn. It also halves the damage a burn Pokemon does with physical moves. I figure if I can get lucky and just burn his onyx with my opening ember, I might actually stand a chance of winning. Sadly, I don't get the burn, but do survive his rock tomb, which I realize has a secondary effect, lowering my speed, meaning I won't even get a second chance at burning him before he finishes me off. Or so I think. For some reason, he opts out for a few binds and tackles, and I come ridiculously close to victory on my first try, but then he does rock to him. More training is definitely required, and we actually learn Will-O-Wisp at level 17 anyway, which is a move whose sole purpose is burning the opponent. However, rather than grinding against wild Pokemon, I decide to just keep challenging Brock. His Geodude is giving off about the same XP as around 12 wild encounters, which is way more efficient, plus I get the renewed chance at burning his onyx and eventually do exactly that and win before even getting to level 17. Cackling madly, we accept the boulder badge, light fire to the gym and move towards Mount Moon. <laughs> Rest in pieces, Brock. The trainers in Mount Moon pose no real threat to us at all, but we do encounter our first rockets and I begin to understand the real threat of only having one Pokemon and no ability to heal in battle. Status conditions like sleep or poison or confusion are much scarier when you can't heal or switch, and I am certain will become bigger issues further in the game. In fact, the final trainer of the cave managed to poison us just as we ran out of embers, and I thought we might have to walk the entire cave again with renewed embers to take him down, but our quick attack proved strong enough for victory. Before we can take on Misty, however, there are some other peaches that need frying. Our rival is back and boasting as big as ever, and this time I actually have some trouble with him. But the trouble doesn't come from where you might think. The real issue is that he he leads with his Pidgeotto, and it almost always uses Sand Attack, and even when he only hits me once, it is immensely effective at getting me to miss. Despite this, I can normally still take down his Pidgeotto, and even his Squirtle with relative ease, but the problem is that I'm typically at such a low health by this point that his Rattata, who knows Quick Attack, can pick off my remaining HP. On about my fourth attempt, I change up my strategy and use Confuse Ray on his Pidgeotto. This sends it into an absolutely utter frenzy and it is unable to lower my accuracy at all or even touch me. From there, picking off his Squirtle is no problem and I have more than enough HP to incinerate his Rattata. Leaving a smoldering pile of peaches on the bridge, I continue towards Bill to collect my SSN ticket and to grind some more levels on the trainers and learn a crucial move, Flamethrower. This is a game changer, as it is three times as powerful as Ember and will be an enormous asset moving forward. And now armed to the teeth with my flamethrowing Vulpix, we head into Misty for the second badge. I fry the fish of all of her underlings before taking on Misty herself. Her Staryu is a complete joke and always opens with Harden before getting flamethrowered to death. Starmie, on the other hand, is a much different story. She always opens with Water Pulse, which is super effective and does just under half damage which would be fine, except it also has the chance to confuse, which she manages to pull off on all three of my first attempts to beat her. This is infuriating, as it only has a 20% chance to confuse, but eventually I turn the tables and confuse her Starmie before it can hit me with Water Pulse. This gives me the opportunity to serve up some tasty roasted starfish, collect the Cascade badge, and leave her gym in cinders. Nice to know, Misty. With our two biggest early game obstacles out of the way and a Vulpix that is now vastly overleveled for the area of the game and armed with flamethrower, we plow forward with little resistance at all. We blast through all of the trainers around Vermilion City as well as everyone aboard the SSN, basically one-shotting everything with our mighty flames. After facing a few tentacles and other fire types though, I do decide to also give Vulpix Dig as a soft backup option and start to wonder if the normally easy fire type gym will actually pose a challenge in this playthrough, but that's still a way off. Peaches, who so recently was giving us trouble, is now a laughable opponent. 
everything dies in one shot except for his war turtle who wastes a turn using withdraw before going down to a nasty burn. Lieutenant Surge leads with a Voltorb and a Pikachu, both of which forget to even blink before getting hit in the eyes with some fire. His Raichu though does survive the first shot and tries to set up a double team, but at this point I think my Vulpix is just holding back on some of these flamethrowers. I mean, this is the second boss battle in a row. She decides to give them an ounce of hope before letting their burn kill them off. With our third badge in hand, we light fire to yet another gym and head towards the rock tunnel. So at this point, our Vulpix is level 38 and the game has gotten pretty easy. So I'm just going to start skipping around to the more important battles or any particularly tricky situations and assume you otherwise know the basic plot of the game. Since I only have my Vulpix and Sand True I use to get cut, my Pokedex actually isn't full enough for me to get Flash. So I have to do rock tunnel blind, which is super annoying, as is occasionally running out of flamethrowers. But we manage. Our next battle with Peaches is in Lavender Town, and he is still just no match at all. I burn his War Turtle out of the gate this time, just for good measure, and although it hits me with a super effective water gun, it does no damage. Other than that, he's picked up a laughable Execute and a Growlithe I take down after a dig. Better luck next time, Peaches. But this is where things get serious. From there, we head to Celadon City to take on Erica, possibly the most daunting gym leader of them. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, <laughs> no, no, she, she was terrible. Before we can head any further though, we need the Pokeflu, which means we need to clear out the Rocket game corner and recover the Silph Scope from Team Rocket. This is our first match with Giovanni, and I was actually a little concerned because he uses ground types, or, well, that's what he says. For this matchup, he is sporting Onyx, Rhyhorn, and Kangaskhan, only two of which are actually ground types, and only none of which actually have any ground type moves, which, like, Seriously, did they just forget what was going on with this guy? Did, did they forget the the point? I I don't know. Either way, they put up exactly no fight at all. His Kangaskhan manages to hit me once with rage, but is otherwise put to an early grave, and I breathe a sigh of relief that his team wasn't more of a challenge. However, I do soon get a true taste of ground power. With the Silph Scope in hand, I head back to Lavender Town to rescue Mr. Fuji. The Rockets and other trainers are complete pushovers, but the restless ghost of Cubone's mother, Marowak, does give me cause for concern. She barely survives my flamethrower and lands a Bone Meringue, which does way more than I'm comfortable with for being nearly 20 levels higher. We return her to Ashes a turn later, but it is clear to me that our level advantage will only go so far if we come across more formidable ground opponents. On with the Poke Flute, though, we can finally take on Snorlax and gain access to Cycling Road. Uh, after we go get a bike. Oh, I'm sorry, I mean after we go get a bike voucher. Uh. I've been nervous about Koga's gym for a while since he uses a lot of poison and evade techniques and if we get poison early and can't kill him off or his coughing explodes or something like that, we might be in a tight spot here. He opens with coughing, which does not get a chance to self-destruct, and from there he goes straight to his muck. Knowing I couldn't knock him out in one go, I opted for the confused ray and it seriously throws him for a loop. He eats himself twice before Koga opts for a hyper potion and we use the free turn to flamethrower him into oblivion. His wheezing manages to survive a blast as well and he does does try to poison me with toxic, but <laughs> at this point, it is way too little, way too late, and he misses anyway. So we light his toxic fumes on fire, collect the soul badge, and continue on our way. From here, we head to Saffron City to challenge Sabrina for the Marsh Badge, but Team Rocket is in the way, so first we have to clear them out of the Sylph Building. Before we can face off against Boss Rocket for our second match, though, we must first take on Peaches once more, and his team has grown a lot since our last encounter. He leads, as always, with Pidgeot, but it goes down to a single flamethrower. Not wasting any more time, though, Peaches gets straight to the point and sends out his big Hydro Guns Blastoise. This is my first encounter with his fully evolved starter, and it does give me pause. I spend a few turns trying to confuse him, but he blocks me with protect. Knowing he can't get a third one off, I instead opt for Will-O-Wisp, which lands, but he also hits me with a water gun. It does reasonable damage, but I think we can survive. I blast him with flamethrower and then decide to dig to let a free turn of burn hit him, and boom, once more, he's turtle soup. Unfortunately, he then sends in his Growlithe. I feel certain I'll outspeed him and be able to kill him with a dig, but he 
has Intimidate, which nerfs my already poor attack even more, and he survives the first attack. And at this point, I seriously would have lost had I not gotten super lucky and dodged his takedown. From there, it's just cleanup as we blast through the rest of his pathetic team with Flamethrower. Our reward for winning, though, is just another boss fight with Giovanni, this time with some bigger guns, but still equally small brains. His Rhyhorn, Kangaskhan, and Nidoqueen are all able to survive a Flamethrower to the face, but he uses his free turns poorly, opting to hit me with Stomp, Rage, and yes, Tail Whip, respectively. Overall, he does almost no damage and is defeated once more. With the rockets cleared out, it was time to take on our sixth gym leader, the psychic type user, Sabrina. At this point, we are super overleveled, so I wasn't expecting much resistance from Sabrina's gym, but I will say some of her lackeys were using slow bros, which did manage to survive a few flamethrowers and hit me with water gun and confusion, but they didn't do much damage. Still, looking ahead, it is starting to make me nervous for Lorelei of the Elite Four, who also has a slow bro. Sabrina herself was no issue at all. My only potential mistake would have been running out of flamethrowers. By the time I reach her, I actually only have four left for her four Pokemon, but it turns out that it's more than enough. We burn her gym to the ground as well and venture out to Cinnabar Island. Well, almost a Cinnabar. Beforehand, I decide to go hunt down some PP up so I won't keep running out of flamethrowers, and after I use three on Vulpix, flamethrower is up to 24 power points, so I shouldn't have to worry about running out of moves anymore. Anyway though, that brings us to Blaine's gym, where I promptly run out of moves. But not flamethrower, dig. Hilariously, this happens against a Vulpix, who then also uses Imprison, a move I have never, ever been affected by before in Pokemon. It is a super dumb move that stops your opponent from using moves your Pokemon also has. 99% of the time, this is a super pointless move, but since I'm using the exact same Pokemon as my opponent, I now can't use Flamethrower or Confuse Ray, and I'm out of digs, so my only hope is that I will run out of Will-O-Wisps and struggle, which I don't, before I die to Confusion. Yeah, that's right. I died against a Vulpix. Ugh. That was extremely embarrassing in the moment, but after I heal up, that guy is no problem because I can just use Dig again. But the fight with Blaine ends up being the most difficult yet. The issue is that he has Growlithe and Arcanine, both of which have Intimidate, which lowers my Dig's attack power. Plus, he has two full heals and two Hyper Potions. My first try doesn't go very well. I get hit with a bounce, which paralyzes me and makes things very hard because now I have to make it through two turns of Dig without getting fully paralyzed and hope he doesn't use bounce when I would try to strike or he'll just not be there and I'll miss. This does not work out in my favor and I lose on the first try. Round two, though, I switch things up and immediately use Confuse Ray on his Ponyta and Rapidash to limit their ability to hit me with bounce and mostly it's working until I make one little miscalculation and after one hit, I'm paralyzed again. I make it to his Arcanine and know my only hope is to keep confusing him and to hope he takes lots of recoil damage from takedown, and this works pretty well, and I even hit him with a dig. From here though, I don't think I'm gonna be able to risk two turns of paralysis on dig and think maybe I can finish him with a flamethrower if I get lucky, but Blaine Hyper Potions and I'm certain I'm doomed until Flamethrower actually connects with a crit and to my utter shock, one hit KOs the Arcanine. Like, I could not believe it. I literally threw my hands in the air in this moment and began wondering like, was Dig even worth it if Flamethrower is that much more effective? With the Volcano Badge in hand, it's finally time for our third and final battle with Giovanni. He opens with Rhyhorn and Dugtrio, both of which fail easily to my Flamethrower. His Nino Queen, however, survives and lands a very solid Earthquake on us. Anticipating his Hyper Potion, though, I think I will use Will-O-Wisp on him so that my next Flamethrower will finish her off, except... I miss with Will-O-Wisp, and then of course my flamethrower does the same amount of damage it did before, and his earthquake kills me this time. Why I didn't just spam flamethrower, I don't know. It definitely would have worked, but uh, oh well, I guess I'll just do it next time. Except, I decide that next time I'm going to get cute with it and confuse Ray's Nidoqueen so that it won't hit me at all, which I, again, I don't know 
why I do this. It totally doesn't get confused, hits me with earthquake, and I die again. Why I didn't just spam flamethrower, I don't know. It definitely would have worked, but oh well, I'll do it next time. Or that was the plan anyway, except on round three, I think Vulpix just got like mad because despite not gaining any levels, somehow she manages to first one hit KO the Nidoqueen, Queen and then crits Giovanni's Nido King and then just destroys his final Rhyhorn after surviving an earthquake. This certainly wasn't the easiest fight, but it's mostly just because I kept trying to be cute. But either way, we leave the gym in ashes and prepare for the Elite Four. Before we can head to the Elite Four though, we must battle Peaches yet again and he is finally starting to put up a fight. He leads with Pidgeot, which is no trouble at all, and I roast his Rhyhorn in one shot with Flamethrower, but then he brings out the big water guns. Blastoise. This thing hits hard and resists even harder. My flamethrower does almost nothing to him and after his second water gun crits, I'm out. On the third try, we do get a little luckier. I confuse him again because it's really my only hope and I also burn him. The real trouble though is that he's using rain dance which makes my already weak flamethrower even weaker. The good news is though, he's burned and I still have Dig, which I start using to run out the turns on his Rain Dance, dodge his attacks and let the burn damage build up and thankfully this works and I finally take him down. From there, the rest of the team is a total pushover. I blaze through Execute and Growlithe and then roast his Alakaz- what, 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 what the heck? Ugh. Yeah, that's right. His Alakazam lives on one HP and then crits me with a Psychic and I have to start all over again. On the repeat fight, the Blastoise fight is just as frustrating, but we do manage to pull through and this time we roast his Alakazam in one shot. May he not rest in peace. After making our way through Victory Road, we are at level 75 and I feel like I'm in a pretty good position. But, since we've picked up 5 rare candies along the way, I decide I'll go ahead and feed them to Vulpix at this point to boost us up to level 80, because hey, why not? From there, I head in to what I feel will be certain the hardest member of the Elite Four. Lorelei. And I'll tell you what, after my first several attempts, I seriously hope she is the hardest member because I can barely take down three of her Pokemon if I'm lucky. My flamethrower hits hard, but her surfs are just too strong. It's a special attack, so burning her doesn't limit the damage, and the amount of luck needed to confuse her to death would just be ridiculous. But... I do have an idea. It took some serious backtracking, but I headed back to the Safari Zone to pick up a TM I'd missed earlier in the game for Sunny Day. This is a weather move that not only increases the power of my flamethrower, but also cuts her surf damage in half. I finally decide to replace Dig with Sunny Day, and for good measure, level Vulpix up five more times grinding on Victory Road and give it another try. Our odds and effectiveness are significantly better, but the problem, as we predicted way back in Sabrina's gym, is her slow bro. Lorelei always leads with Dugong, which I can normally two hit KO with Flamethrower after Sunny Day is up. But if it surfs, I take some rough damage even if the sun is up. And if it doesn't surf, it's because it's using Hail, which means I have to use Sunny Day again, which gives Lorelei a free turn. My best bet is if she uses Safeguard, but even then it means I can't burn her party for five turns if the need arises. Next up is her Cloister, which goes down super easy, but then she always goes for her Lapras. Lapras takes a little bit of luck, but if we are lucky, it'll go down after just two flamethrowers. But like I said, Slowbro is the real issue. It is so bulky, and by the time it shows up, I usually need to restart the sun to survive its surfs, which is a really weird sentence. At that point in the fight though, I can usually take maybe one more surf from Slowbro before I die, and it doesn't always use it, but when it doesn't, it's because it's using Amnesia, which raises its special defenses super high, rendering my already highly resisted flamethrower even more useless. I get stuck relying on burns and confusion, which I get close with sometimes, but as ever, she still has two full restores, which just... <sighs> Eventually, after grinding up to level 90 and cursing myself for using those rare candies earlier, I managed to make it to Slowbro with high health. I set up the sun as it sets up Amnesia. I Will-O-Wisp him while he Amnesias again and get him burnt and followed up with Confuse Ray and it is a doozy. The Slowbro doesn't know which way is up at this point and hits himself for the rest of the fight, which, combined with the burns and flamethrowers, is 
finally enough to take him down. Jinx is just an afterthought. With Lorelai finally down, we advance to Bruno, who I'm certain will be a pushover, and for the most part, he is. But to my utter surprise, his Hitmonlee manages to knock me out after surviving a flamethrower. So next time, I don't take any chances and use Sunny Day right at the start of the battle, which makes all of the difference, and his team goes down no problem. Next up is Agatha, who is a delightful pushover. I just flamethrower everything and advance right past her, no questions asked. Yay. But Lance is is a much different story. I get lucky and his Gyarados goes down on a two hit KO thanks to a critical hit, but then he sends an Aerodactyl and its ancient power hits hard and activates by boosting all of its stats, which actually means he outspeeds me and finishes me with the second ancient power. I decided the best thing to do was just grind against the Elite Four until I make it to level 100, and I really think that made the difference, but even then, it came down to some luck. I finally managed to get past Aerodactyl by hitting it with a Confuse Ray early and having it hit itself every try until I knock it out with a flamethrower. Sadly, I actually wasn't even anticipating a win when that was happening, so I wasn't recording, but I did start right after that point. I confused his Dragonite as well, and it also miraculously hits itself twice in a row, allowing me to set up Sunny Day again and blast him with flamethrower. Then, on a super Super lucky third turn in a row, he punches himself in the face once more, bringing him to red HP. And for a second, I panicked, thinking Lance was definitely about to use a full restore. But Dragonite Citrus Berry activated, healed him out of full restore range, and one more flamethrower takes him down. All he had left was two Dragonairs, and I was a little concerned, but they actually both go down easy to a flamethrower in one shot, meaning we have officially defeated Lance and the Elite Four, and now have just just one giant peach standing in our way. Our first try only goes so-so, but I learn a lot. He leads with Pidgeot, which is no issue, I blast right through it, but then he goes to Rhydon, who can live a flamethrower and often leads with Scary Face, which drops my speed dramatically. From there, I can take out Rhydon pretty easy, but as you might expect, his Blastoise is the bigger problem. And if I take a Scary Face, I'm slower than it. Plus, he almost always leads with Rain Dance, which cancels out my sun. But I will say, even having taken some damage, Vulpix manages to live a Rain Dance powered Hydro Pump in the face, which is really impressive. But eventually, we do lose. On our next attempt, his Pidgeot opens with Sand Attack, which is super annoying, and we get scary faced, but nonetheless, I get some confusion luck and take out his Blastoise. Then, Alakazam outspeeds and hits us with Psychic, which we survive before one shot him. Executor then misses his Egg Bomb, and we take it out, leaving just Arcanine between us and the Hall of Fame, but it has extreme speed and hits us for a very near loss. At this point, it becomes clear to me that surprisingly, the real issue I'm having against Peaches is the Rhydon's scary face. So when Rhydon shows up, rather than flamethrowering him, I hit it with a Confuse Ray, and after it punches itself in the face, I get the kill without losing my speed. I predict Blastoise will try to change the weather, so I use my first turn to confuse him. We then trade weather for a few turns before he finally hits himself and I'm able to get off a flamethrower in the sun, which also burns him and activates his citrus berry. But he does manage to get off another rain dance. And here I have a tough decision between sunning up or trying to finish him in the rain with flamethrower. I end up going for it, thinking the burn will probably take him out even if I don't, and after confusion and burn kick in, Blastoise is down. Alakazam comes out, and I go for another flamethrower in the rain. It does over half, and we take a psychic from him no problem before finally finishing him off. Executor then comes out, and I decide to risk activating the sun again, but he light screens. I debate burning him or confusing him to try and run out his light screen, but realize I'd also also be running out my sun and I'm out of power points so I won't be able to put it up again so instead I just blast him and despite his light screen he actually goes down in one shot and once more it's down to just Arcanine and I'm feeling pretty positive that the light screen his extreme speed and natural resistance to fire is going to win out over us but then in one of the dumbest moves 
ever. Peaches uses Flamethrower and activates my Vulpix's ability. Flash fire, boosting my otherwise dulled fire attacks. I can feel the victory looming in the background, but I know I'm not there yet. In absolute fear of his extreme speed, I throw a confuse ray at him and he hits himself, not just here, but also on the next turn where he indeed tries to use extreme speed. And suddenly the moment is upon us. The window is open. Vulpix is able to launch a fire flash boosted flamethrower in the sun and in a true moment of heroics she crits arcanine taking him down and defeating peaches i literally thrust my arms in the air in celebration as we become the champion and beat pokemon leaf green with just a vulpix oh my gosh you guys this was such a fun adventure there were certainly really frustrating moments and lorelei who i've never had much trouble with before is now officially my new worst enemy her slow bro is seriously no joke and i totally had a blast doing this project just sort of playing here and there during moments of downtime but i would love to do more stuff like this if you guys have suggestions which of course i am sure you do and i look forward to milling through all of them in the comments down below but in in the meantime, thank you so much for liking this video, subscribing to the channel, dinging that bell, and I will see you next time.